This Santa took your gifts, threw them in the pit. You can suck my dick, you ain't getting shit. Santa took your gifts, oh, please, Santa, threw them in the pit. Oh, oh, oh. You can suck my dick, oh, yeah. you ain't getting shit. This is the pit. Welcome to the pit. As you heard from the intro, man, Beta Boy, you ain't getting sh. Beta. Beta. Welcome to the pit. This is your man, Crow Soul, and my boy, Lil Bear, over here. Ho, ho, ho. And again, if it's not too much to ask, can we please get a little like, a little subscribe, and a little commento if it's not too much to ask from still you got, guys? Still got five <laughs> days till Christmas. You better like and subscribe, bro. Santa exactly is right. the rest of your right. shit in the pit. The rest of the sh uh. is right here with me. What I'm doing with it? Ooh, oof, boy, you don't even want to know. Oh, man. I mean, I hope you like frosting. I don't even wear no pants today, so <laughs> think about that. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about, of course, your favorite holiday, Christmas, right? Uh, but, 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 Croso, my what? favorite holiday is Halloween. Your favorite holiday? Shut the fuck up. Oh, man, it's oh. Christmas. <laughs> it's always Christmas. <laughs> Talking about Halloween. Christmas. You know, you know what Halloween is? What? Christmas with masks, all right? Because <laughs> you're still getting sh <laughs> You go trick-or-treating, what do you get? Presents in the form of nougat and sugar and chocolate, right? It's Santa, still Christmas. If Santa gave me a Snickers, I'd uh, his throat. <laughs> well, I mean, Santa's not gonna give you sh. Because uh, remember, I still have all your crap. God damn it. <laughs> So guys, what do you guys? What what is your favorite Christmas memory? Like, feel free to write us in the comments. Feel free to message us personally on our Facebook page. Let us know your favorite Christmas story or your Christmas tradition. Right. So we're gonna be covering that today. For instance, my favorite Christmas story is when I was, hmm, let's say, a few years back. So it was me. And, you know, a really special lady with me over here watching a movie, right? And it was all quiet. And a lot of you, have you seen Insidious? Who <clears throat> Remember that scene with uh, the kitchen table and the, the guy with the, the red face? Darth, Darth Maul. Darth Maul is like, ooh, you know? My grandpa throws a firecracker, bro, that goes like, Pah! And, man, I kid you not, you know... My lady friend over here flops to the floor. My dad over jumps out of the chair. My grandpa is in the back cackling, like, yeah, <laughs> running away. That was the best Christmas like memory that I have from back then, man. What about you? All right, so <clears throat> this Christmas was a very special Christmas. You know, we had all the brothers over. We were all kids and stuff. So Santa and Mrs. Claus, they got for us these electric scooters. And they were planning on building them the night before, so everyone goes to sleep, and Mr. and Mrs. Claus go out to the garage, and they start building up the scooters. I had a motorcycle, my other brothers all had scooters, because, you know, they could stand up, it was cool, and I was short and tiny, and the motorcycle fit me. So, <laughs> plus, you know, I've always been a little bit special. <laughs> So they uh, they end up building these scooters, and so they take they each take one out to kind of test drive it to uh, you know see how well they ride, see if they're safe or whatever. And realistically, they're just trying to have a little bit of fun at the end of the night. So they drive around, and Mrs. Claus ends up hitting a car that is parked. You know, they just come out of nowhere, right? Oof. Oof. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> well, I mean, the owner of the car doesn't know who did it, but uh, <laughs> because most of the damage happened to the uh, scooter. So, <laughs> so the next day, you know, I open my motorcycle. It's so cool. One of my brothers gets the scooter. It's fine. The next brother opens his scooter and he's like, why are the handlebars broken off? <laughs> <laughs> the underwear gnomes did it, bro. That's right. But yeah, uh, when we're talking about Christmas, how, what do you, how much do you really know about St. Nick? I don't know sh about St. Nick. St. Nick, the fact right? that you stole my presents and put it in the pit. Do, do you guys uh, were ever doing that um, where you clean the boot and you know you get a little present from either St. Nick or if you were bad, Krampus drops you a coal? You know, that type of tradition, big in German. Where the f*** are you from? Well, I'm not going to tell you, dog. you got to <laughs> guess. <laughs> you can find that on my OnlyFans. <laughs> but yeah, what, what about that? You have any special traditions going on down here? Well, uh, with the, living in the uh, southern portion of the United States, 
uh, a lot of us have Cuban heritage or Hispanic heritage, and personally, I have a little bit of Cuban in me. Um, <laughs> any ladies? You want some Cuban in you? <laughs> he got a lot of Cuban in him, and I'm done talking about the sandwich. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, what a lot of Hispanic and Latin American countries do is they celebrate like this semi festival, mostly like a thing with their family, like their extended family as Latins are want to do. Um, and they do it Christmas night. They call it uh, Buenas Noches or something along those lines. We don't call it that because we're Americans, damn it. But you, just, you just call it night. Yeah, we just call it Christmas Eve. <laughs> right. And so we would go over to Grandma's house, and she would make us this delicious uh, mojo pork. She would make oh. us um, this uh, potato-y, like, waxy thing that's covered in uh, garlic. They call it yucca. I love it. Plenty of people hate yucca, but I love it. And you cover it all in gravy. And then at the end of the night, what we would do as a big family, we'd pull... Numbers out of a hat, and we would play a white elephant gift exchange. And my man. Nice, man. That was the shit. And because, of course, you know, Cuban, everyone was trying to get cans of condensed milk to put in their coffee. <laughs> and every year we have three things that go around. Cuban coffee, like uh, uh, the the milk, the condensed milk that you put in the Cuban coffee. Right, right. Number two was a rubber chicken that's been signed and taken pictures with everyone who's owned it in the previous year, so you get a little signature of the year next to it. Nice. And then uh, uh, the third thing that everyone gets is disappointment <laughs> because you open a present, it's like, wow, a Soft. box of tampons. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, grandma. <laughs> But, okay, like, I'm going to bring you a, a wholesome thing. You know, we don't do that a lot, but I'm going to do it. So, I used to do this tradition, right? And my grandpa was the one who kind of introduced me to it. And again, when I was a kid, I thought it was, like, silly, you know? But now, I find out, like, doing it whenever I can, you know, when we go on vacation. And he had this thing where he used to have this wooden stove, right? And every Christmas Eve, he would light the fire in there. And what he wanted you to do, don't let the fires go extinct, right? And I asked him, like, Grandpa, why do you do that? That's, that's, that makes no sense. And he would tell me, he's like, you know what? I do that because I believe it's going to keep little baby Jesus warm. Honestly, Aww. I cannot tell you that was the most wholesome thing, you know. Grandpa's not with us anymore. So to this day, just like a little honoring of that man, I do it sometimes, you know. What about you? Do you have anything like that? Well, you know, every year you know, I'm relatively active in my church and I like to serve when I can. This year I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that because of other family obligations. But one thing that at least our family does is every year to start off the Christmas season right, because, you know, it's awful that all these stores are putting up Christmas decorations and, you know, November 1st. It's a little <laughs> early, if you know what I mean. Right, right, right. And I get tired of that Mariah Carey song, you know? <laughs> Which one is Mariah Carey? All I want for Christmas is you. Wait for it. Yeah. Okay. Did, he did a lot better than me. <laughs> so... So, to start off right is the night of Thanksgiving. When everyone's gone home, my family would gather us all around in the living room, which didn't happen all the time. So, we would get all in the living room and we would watch National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. And it was just the perfect way to start off the Christmas season. The next day, my mom would come down with the Christmas ornaments. And when I was little, I would help her put out the ornaments. And then as I turned like 11, 12, I was old enough to get up on the ladder. My dad would, you know, hand me a... You know, giant ball of lights say, oh, little tangle, hope you have fun untangling all this and then putting it up on the roof. <laughs> we would always have on a roof this little sign that said, Jesus is Lord. And um, we're up at the corner of a place uh, of the neighborhood so that people from the road can see it. And it was always nice. And one year we forgot to put it up or, you know, we were just too tired or whatever. So we, you know, didn't have the ability to put it up. We had at least 10 people knock on our door, ring the doorbell and say, hey, why isn't the Jesus is Lord sign up anymore? Yeah, like, see, that's that's something that's really uh, special, right? And that brings me to this, like, uh, uh, anybody who's listening to us, if you are from Europe, you mostly know what Advent is, right? For those who do not, Advent is this huge thing that goes on where every capital in, like, the European Union gets decorated, right? And it's one of the most magical things you can see, especially as a child, because they have this guy in, like, a carriage, 
riding around, throwing little teddy bears at kids. It's magical, right? And this year is the first time, you know, it's going to get canceled because of corona, right? Oh, hold on. We're going to have to censor that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's a corona. But yeah, and it's really kind of a, a bus skill, right? This is the time where everybody should get like hopeful. You should be happy. You know, you made it through the year. And it's kind of a, I mean, are we really going to let the Christmas spirit die because some little flu is going around, man? Not here in the, in the American South, we ain't. Ain't nothing going to stop our shit. That's exactly right. Jesus don't wait for no flu. <laughs> He like, getting bored no matter what this year. I don't give a shit who you are. <laughs> like Jesus from South Park coming in. Like, <laughs> Uzi's <a> shit. <laughs> Jesus is coming down the escalators, you know, covered in gold with the vaccine in his hand. <laughs> I've had enough. Crucify this. <laughs> he just kills all the bats on the planet. <laughs> but yeah, did you guys know that Santa used to be blue? B- blue. Santa used to be blue. Santa used to be blue. Do what, you know? What? You mean like his outfit? Yeah, man. You know which company made him red? You want to guess? Oh, was it a certain cola company? Al, it was the Coca Cola, man. Oh. And that's actually really weird because you know most of us don't remember Santa in a blue outfit. But that's why when you go to um, to a store, you do sometimes find, like, especially all these, right? They import a lot of stuff from Europe and stuff, right? You do find Santas in a little blue coat. Remember that? That used to be the original one, right? Okay, see, that starts to make a little bit of sense here. Now, I don't know that much about the original story of uh, of St. Nicholas. Now, I know everything there is to know about, uh, you know, the birth of Christ and everything like that. I and mean, there's a lot of cool things to go into about that, but... Go ahead. Tell us a story about St. Nicholas. Well, well, from what I know about St. Nick, and it was like a, a story, you know, back in the day when uh, a lot of was going on. A lot of people were poor and, you know, it was just like the middle middle ages type of stuff, right? And it was a story about a family who, were, who, who had to pretty much sell their daughter into like servitude because they were poor. They had no money. And good old St. Nick heard about that. And the next day, they found a pouch with gold. So they didn't have to sell their daughter. And that was pretty much the first thing that I heard about, you know, good old St. Nick. Like a real life Santa Claus. Now, true or false, St. Nicholas is the patron saint of prostitutes. I don't think so. I have no idea. All right, homework, pitlings. (laughs) It's time to go. My pit spawn, unite and find out whether or not that's true or false. But why would he be? Well, because he stopped, like he was, you know, he had compassion for these girls who were going to be sold into, let's be honest, probably social slavery, right? right. Well, most likely. I mean, we're talking about the... Uh, I mean, how much grain can a, a, a female in the Middle Ages, you know, pull, you know? Yeah, that's true. But yeah, that's actually, I've never even heard of that. That's that's pretty interesting. So yeah, go ahead and see what you can dig up on good old St. Nick. Maybe it was like a real life super superhero, you know what I mean? Hmm. So he deserved this title of a saint, personally. And you know, and I'm not sure if we're going to keep this in, but interestingly enough, a little Christmas fact here. So what did the uh, three wise men give to Jesus, you know, give to Mary and Joseph, rather, uh, on the, you know, whenever they met up and they, uh, they, they gave him some stuff? What did they give him? Go ahead. You tell him what they gave him. They gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So gold, that is a gift fit for a king, right? Absolutely. Frankincense. That was a gift meant for the priests. That was something that you would put into the temple. And, you know, just think it's like a cousin of incense. You know, it's something that you burn for religious ceremony. Right. So it's something for a priest. And then the last thing was myrrh. That was something that was given to the dead. That was something that was given out for um, burials and in tombs and things like that so that, you know, whenever someone would go and visit their dead, obviously they wouldn't smell the decay. So the three wise men or three kings, you know, it's debated whether or not those are different groups of people. But these people gave them gifts fit for a king, gifts fit for a priest, and and gifts fit for the dead. That's actually pretty interesting when you think about that, isn't it? Mm-hmm. When you when you know about the little story, what everything what happens, right? Kind of mm-hmm. adds up, doesn't it? Big time, big, big time. time, big time, right? But again, let's go back on the topic of Christmas, right? We're talking Christmas, you know, as a family holiday, and let's talk about how Christmas actually changed. Because remember, back in the '90s, Home Alone was huge, man. Like, and we're talking Christmas movies. When is the last time, like? 
you had a big rush of these Christmas, like modern Christmas movies that were, you were like, man, I'm going to watch this every year. I don't think I did, man. Yeah. The, the one that you watch every year, mostly, again, you were going to watch Home Alone, mm -hmm. the original Grinch, maybe, and like not yeah. the original, but the Jim Carrey one, right? No, I'll watch the original. Oh, no, the original. Look, right, the, all right. Look, the Jim Carrey one is good. He did well in it, but it's never going to beat the original Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss. You know, animation with Cindy Lou Who, you know. Well, again, but not everybody. You know, some people like Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey is not bad. Whatever, you know, happened, this, whatever happened to the Cindy Lou Who girl? I have no idea. I only heard you, rumors, but I, I don't know even her real name. Didn't she grow her. up to be like a pro actress? <laughs> yeah, I heard that, but how much is true to that? Let's be real. Internet tells, internet lies. So, true. We, we don't know. But yeah, you know... A modern movie, for instance, like, what is Netflix or what is that other channel that always plays uh, Christmas movies? Oh, ABC Family. Yeah. What, what what movie did they make recently that you were like, man, I'm going to watch this next year, too? You know, the most recent movie I can think of that would be considered a good Christmas watch every year movie. <laughs> the New Grinch. <laughs> Well, I'm thinking more along the lines of Elf with, uh, with uh, oh, you know. Elf, yeah, with Will Ferrell. Yeah, it's a, what, Will what, Ferrell. Will Ferret. Yeah, yeah, Will Ferrell, not Will Ferrell. Will Ferret. Will Ferret. That's what his new name now. All right, cool. Will Ferret. Um, great Did movie. you call me a mongoloid? <laughs> I mean, don't like Russians keep Mongols in cages and stuff? I mean, it's close enough, right? <laughs> yeah, same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yes, yeah, so, I mean, Elf is a pretty darn good movie. You know, it's, it's nice and quotable. You know, you got your, you know, food groups, your candy, candy cane, candy corn, and syrup, you know. It's your main food groups, you know. But it's still, it's like, that, there's some cringe factor about it where, like, if I'm watching that with family, like with my parents, I'm like, I'm sorry I put you guys through this. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, that's kind of, yeah, I, I kind of agree with that, you know. There's a lot of movies that when you watch it with your mom and your dad and you're just like, oh, and it's like, about stuff like that when you, you remember parts like how you acted out and you're like oh man I was a little shit bro mm -hmm. like yeah yeah I, 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 can, I can relate to that but what about uh, that Christmas movie with uh, what's his name Tim Allen mm. when he was oh. Santa when he killed Santa to become Santa what is that I the, forgot the Santa Claus and ah, Claus yeah, is yeah. spelled as in like a clause in a in a you know a contract you know this is the clause of the contract you know and yeah, I mean that that's a, that that's a decent movie, but you know I was trying to think a little bit more recent. But yeah, you know what? That's something that's that. Yeah, yeah, that's something I could say I watch every year. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. And again, uh, I do watch something a lot, and I most likely watch this movie at least seven or eight times, and that's uh, Lord of the Rings. Mm. I don't know about you, but for some reason, my dad loves the movie. I like the movie, so. We sometimes pop it in and just watch Lord of the Rings, man. Yeah, I finally got uh, my special lady to watch the whole thing through, and I, I mean, she was like, "Oh, you know, let's watch the, you know, the normal ones." I'm like, "No, you have to watch the extended edition. <laughs> if you don't watch the extended edition, you're not getting the whole story." Like, remember in the second one, the or sorry, the beginning of the third one happens, right? Right. And in the original version that went to the uh, movie theaters, everyone was like. Well, what happened to Saruman? What happened to the original White Wizard, man? I mean, I know that they lost it, uh, uh, Isengard or wherever he was, but, like, where did he go? All we see is a close-up of Treebeard going, The filth of Saruman says and did. You know, it's like, okay, so where did he go? And then you finally pop in the extended edition a year later into your DVD or your Blu-ray player or whatever. You pop it into your goddamn Xbox. Into and it's like VHS. And you realize that, oh, the, the nasty, you know, greasy 4chan guy, greedy, uh, Grima Wormtongue, ends up stabbing him in the back, and then he falls over onto a spiked wheel of some sort. Then he falls into the water bringing the you know magic eight ball with him down the water <laughs> and then you're like oh so that's how he died which is really interesting that they just didn't put that in the original I mean that was like maybe three minutes of movie that he could have put in there but then again do you remember the ending of the third one I, I do of course I do they were in this little circle surrounded you know oh you're talking about like the end the end where they go on the boat no no they had like seven endings 
Oh, dude. And dude, I I watched it in the movie theater with my parents. I know in the book is like uh, these the what's it the Shire gets invaded and stuff like that. Right? Uh, yeah, it gets invaded by Saruman actually, so he's not even supposed to die right there. Maybe that's why they cut it originally. But so they have like seventeen endings uh, of Lord of the Rings three, and so I'm like, all right, sweet. So you know, Frodo wakes up in the bed, and you have the casting call. It's like, and here's Gandalf, and here. Here's Sam and giving a gay gaze upon Frodo's face. Like, <laughs> and then, you know, and it's like, all right, cool, that's the end. And then it goes to, you know, Sam getting married. It's like, all right, that's cool. And then it goes to Frodo writing in his book. It's like, all right, cool, that's the end. And every single one of these fades to black. So I'm like, all right, here's the ending. All right, I really have to go pee. It's been three and a half hours. Please let me leave. And then, all right, nope, there's another ending. Up, oh, and there he goes to the boat. Up, oh, oh, now we're back in the Shire. Oh, God, please, I'm going to explode. Please hurry. <laughs> but, yeah, but, I, I, yeah, I see what they did there. But, again, the real first bromance was Sam and Frodo. Yeah. I yeah. mean, Sam carried that little little disgusting hairy footed hobbit all up at all the way up in that mountain. Mm-hmm. Even though he was like a douche to him, man. He, he could have just dropped him down the mountain and hit his head be like, Pfft. You gonna talk to me like that, bro? Yeah. Nah, you're not. But no, nah, man, there's something. I think everybody needs a Sam in their life. Everyone needs a Sam because most people are Frodo's. <laughs> so, but yeah, so at the end of it, they end up going to the land of the, uh, uh, like the Undying Lands. That's right. For people who are essentially, they've lived too much life and they want to go to, you know, a premature heaven, you know, before they actually die so they can live out the rest of their days in peace or whatever. Um, and I think that most people can relate to that who have been through any sort of traumatic experience. They've been through a lot of life, you know, at a younger age, especially. They realize it's like, you know, I've done this much with my life. I've already lived through this. I don't have anything else left in me. So they just kind of drift through life, which brings me to the idea of how is Christmas kind of changed since you were a kid? I mean, let's be real. Back in the day, uh, if you still remember when you were younger, Every Sunday used to be off, right? Mm. Sundays used to be a big thing, right? And then uh, was Christmas, everything was closed. Now we're at the point where Christmas is like, uh, you know, most stores are really open. Most some restaurants are open. It's And it lost its touch. Mm. Like it's not, uh, people are not doing what they used to do. You used to, you used to get like socks and sweaters and stuff like that and you were like man thank you right now everything is bought not much talk put into it really sometimes you just get money yeah like it's like the cheapest thing like oh you know I'm, i just have to get him some here's money i just i think uh over the time either people are getting more busy you know or they're just losing that little touch with uh compassion right we're more uh how do you say that a good oiled up engine for production, mm. but not much compassion left. That's correct. And we're not, you know, knocking capitalism or anything along those lines here. You know, uh, both of us have families that were once communist countries, you know, but it's <laughs> still, still, still communist. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I completely agree. And I think that a lot of it has to do with our cell phones and with the screens that we're constantly in front of. It's hard for us to make friends the way that we used to back when we were kids you know you went you walked around your neighborhood you saw some kids playing football or uh soccer or as you might say football yeah you just say can i play yeah, yeah. that was exactly that was exactly it. it's like i mean if you were fat you know you sat off to the side until one kid sprained an ankle then you were out there and you made you made the goalie you know there's a place for everybody exactly and that was the crazy thing there was always a place for everybody man like there was always the fat kid right yeah and every time you're like man i want that guy because he's gonna be a great goalie mm-hmm. and it was never one of those situations Situations where you know you were kind of left out of a game. I mean, we're talking about a generation who ate mud. Okay, let's be real. But we always find a way to entertain ourselves. Like we didn't really need phones. Or some kids these days cry or go into a panic attack when their phone is lost or locked. Or I just God forbid the Wi-Fi is down. (gasps) Oh yeah. Ooh, what am I gonna do now? But I cannot relate to that. I just don't understand. Because again, maybe because we are a little older. And that's not really something that was a part of our childhood. But Parents need to stop giving their kids phones so early. 
Yeah, oh man, when was your first phone? Be real. Okay, so I was 13 or 14. It was my first year at a real high school, and I was also part of the football team, so I couldn't take the bus home. So whenever football practice was over, I would then have the ability to call my parents. But it was one of those flip phones. There was no texting. I mean, if you wanted to text the letter I, you'd have to hit like eight, like six times to get to the lowercase letter I. I mean, it was it was just not. It was just meant for calling my parents until someone chucked. In the phone, yeah, I had a Nokia 3310. I had the OG, brah, the indestructible Thor's hammer. That's exactly right. I mean, mine, you know, you, you had like the little snake game or space yeah. invade or whatever it was called, but yeah, it was primarily for like, do you, do you remember like the little uh, uh, pixelated pictures? Oh my god, oh my lord, Those basically were like the, the dial up of cell phones. Oh yes. my gosh, yeah, you didn't really cell phones were not used for much, cell phones were used, like you said, like I call you. We're going to go play football or basketball or whatever. That type of stuff. And now it's more like, oh, you know, your phone is your phone is your map. Your phone is your phone, right? Mm-hmm. Your phone is your computer. Your phone is your TV. Your wallet. Like, it's everything. Now. Well, I mean, it was almost like uh, uh, Spy Kids. Uh, I think it's Spy Kids 2. The main guy, the main boy kid had like a set of watches that went all the way up to his elbow and he was like you could go on the internet it could text you could call it could do walkie talkies it could do everything well what does it not do well unfortunately it doesn't tell time <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right like a phone is not really a phone anymore yeah that's insane man i mean but- i mean like how do you feel when you get a call instead of a text honestly all depends like <laughs> from from who that's yeah, the there, thing. There you go. I'll be like, I'll be real. I know a lot of us think that way. It's not like when you get a, it's from who. Realistically, if I get a call and it's not for something important, no matter who it's coming from, if someone wants to call me, it's because it's urgent, and that means that I'm gonna have to get off my lazy ass and do something about it. Usually, <laughs> right. like I get a call, it's like, oh, you need to come over here, do this right now, yada yada yada. It's like, no, click, gone. Or if I call him, I just ask him, what are you wearing? <laughs> and he's really rude. He keeps hanging up, though. I don't know why. <laughs> like, that's really rude, man. It's Christmas. Come on. It's the time of giving, bro. Come on, Tim. Give us your... <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to our boy, Martin. Where, where are your pictures? Where, where? Come on, man. Take your shirt off. Send a few. We've been waiting for long enough. <laughs> well, yeah, man. Uh, Christmas is one of those uh, holidays again. I, I'm going to say it's the holiday that's... Everybody is going to have at least one good memory of it, right? I, I just don't think that you can't. Like, even if you had the poorest Christmas on earth where you just ate mac and cheese and sat down with your family, it was still nice, you know? Yeah, I mean, dad usually gets a day off of work or at least, you know, in the that's morning. That's exactly right, man. Like, at least something and you just, like, do it. That That's why I personally think that Christmas needs to go back to, you know, it's hype spirit, right? Like the 90s spirit type of Christmas, man. Dude, the 90s were just so hype in general. There was an enthusiasm for everything for basically no reason. Kazoos! And, and, and then 9-11 happened. That's it, yeah. Okay, so we've hit 9-11. We've hit this. Oh, there's one more group that we haven't hit yet. Um, which brings us to our fuck you shout out. Uh, fuck Hanukkah! <laughs> We here at Crow's Souls Pit would like to formally apologize to any of the Hebrew faith who may have been offended by our jab at their holy holiday. We formally apologize, and our lawyers have instructed us that we are not to make any Hanukkah jokes or Yom Kippur jokes or circumcision jokes for the next 90 days. Thank you, and back to the show. And today's fuck you shout out is straight up gonna go to the virus itself. Fuck Corona, man. Man, fuck this virus, man. I'm so tired of it. Fuck this motherfucking virus. You ain't shit, bro. Let's let's be real. You versus me. I could kill any fucking bat I see, man. You ain't nothing, bro. Fight me, dog. Damn bat soup. Look, seriously, there's so many other creatures to make soup out of. Why bats? I don't fucking know, dog. Yeah, Corona, man. Why the fuck? you pick a bat and again fuck you for ruining advent and fuck you for killing what was the guy that that, that died uh, from Siegfried and Roy both of them you killed both fuck you for killing Siegfried and Roy the goddamn tiger had nothing to do with it I know your game Corona I apologize I don't know if Siegfried and Roy are dead one of them (laughs) <laughs> and that's gonna be it for this episode of the pit we're gonna see you guys on the next episode merry christmas to everybody and a happy new year 
faces sent them to your gifts Threw them in the pit You can suck my dick You ain't getting shit Santa took your gifts Threw them in the pit You can suck my dick You ain't getting shit This is the pit <laughs> <laughs>